Um, that being said about core releases, I saw something quite interesting actually. Um, Virgil launched the the Louis Vuitton and um, his collection with Louis Vuitton uh, in New York, right? Because I think they did the same sort of thing in Mayfair happened recently, and he's got some core sort of installation and activations associated with it. But one thing that I really like the look of is the idea that they did the launch inside of um, what do you, what what the fuck the store do you call it? What's it called? Blah blah blah. Chrome Hearts, right? The Jap the is it Japanese Chrome Hearts? Or is that Goro? That's Goro, isn't it? Yeah, Goro is one Japanese. Anyway, um, Chrome Hearts is kind of you know a staple. It's been a staple within the Japanese streetwear scene in terms of like you know collaboration and stuff. They have tons of stuff with Mastermind, tons of stuff with um Neighborhood, tons of stuff with Double Tap. So you know it's a kind of go to thing. And Virgil's mentioned a few times that it's one of his favorite brands out there from what they've been able to do. And he's done a very interesting collaboration where they were able to do like um a pop up store, a pop up store for his Louis Vuitton collection number one, the kind of Wizard of the Oz thing, um, inside a Chrome Hearts temporary space in New York, which is quite cool. I like that kind of married, right? The kind of like free tier collaboration, right? So Virgil, um, Chrome Hearts and Louis Vuitton kind of all in cahoots together. And the activation looked pretty cool, you know, loads of nice stuff behind there. But one thing that I liked, a little, little detail that um, might go under, might go, uh, might go kind of underground or might go over people's head. People might not really like the look of it, which I thought was quite interesting. Just the way they did the, the DJing kind of activation music side element of it. Most stores, most brands, when they're launching something, always kind of tie in a kind of like press event, a store event that kind of invites some of the movers and shakers of the industry to come in, kind of touch and feel the products or be in one space, get photographed, maybe some interviews, blah, 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 blah. And it's also another way to kind of, you know, um, uh, what would you call it? Um, distribute the information that you're like launching this stuff through various different channels, right? So if I invite a really popular teenage blogger that's really cool, really big in the avant-garde fashion scene, uh, the hope is that I'm going to be able to tap into her audience by allowing her to come and tell her own story or be able to kind of relay what she saw through her own eyes in my collection that I did. And obviously, you tie in that with your official media partners and kaboom, you've got yourself a nice viral kind of piece of the, of the pie. But also, it's kind of a good thing. If you're a creator yourself, it's also like a really amazing place to rapidly um, glean loads of insights into what you're doing, right? Through your peers, through people that you look up to, people that are, are kind of on the come up. It's a great way to kind of like, you know, crowdsource your next few steps. And I guess Virgil and those kind of guys have been very um, adamant of, they've been very good at doing that, right? Utilizing their kind of peer group in order to kind of promote themselves, in order to kind of promote what they're doing, in order to kind of help themselves too. And it's a kind of, it's a it's a part, it's a nepotism that I've kind of, which I was not a fan of in the beginning, but the more time that I'm kind of spending with it, the more time that I'm kind of meditating on it, the more time that I'm kind of thinking about the general landscape of fashion, the general landscape of streetwear, the general landscape of contemporary art, the general landscape of music, I'm starting to understand that we have to kind of practice that nepotism ourselves um, in order to kind of establish um, our position and also establish a path route forward for others coming up in behind us right that's the responsibility that we all have especially as kind of the older people in the scene or people that maybe have a bit more experience we kind of practice the nepotism of kind of pulling in our friends from our own circle instead of going out and hiring the Alistair Mc whatever his name is um mckinnon that works with all these other big magazines and stuff right we need to be able to kind of take what those guys have been doing with their practice negatives within their own group and do it within our group in order to kind of bring ourselves forward right and you know even if your friend isn't the best stylist in the world right giving them opportunity to kind of grow and, and promoting them out there backing them more so than you'd back somebody else outside of your group who's not necessarily cares or invested in your kind of journey and I, I think that's something that they've been able to do very well. It can come across a bit crazy and come across a bit annoying for the most part because you know, it can be a bit self-absorbed. But I think take away all your kind of personal dislike for some of the individuals within that kind of Virgil Abloh kind of circle and just look at what how it's being executed and look at how the opportunities are kind of um, are twofold, right? The, the opportunities are kind of, you know, the opportunities are coming to Virgil and what he's doing. The opportunities are also coming to people that he's kind of promoting and giving the opportunity to because by kind of association, they're all being made to look good. And, and they're obviously the responsibility for you, if you get that kind of cosign, is to make sure you don't fuck up, right? Don't do anything stupid. Don't kind of... Um, compromise a group which is why i'm interested to see what happens with bari what happens with ian connor because you know they're they're always tend they may have, have a tendency to kind of get involved in some sort of controversy i'm interested to see how they kind of deal with that because of course like council culture hasn't really made its way through streetwear or through the scene in general people have been able to kind of you know by and large get by with you know with get by and not have their whole career cancelled unless maybe aaron bondaroff is probably the only person who i've seen 
get completely um, whitewashed from the scene and you don't hear him mentioned at all whatsoever. I think for the most part, everyone else has been able to survive. But I'm interested to see what happens then. What happens when somebody gets into controversy? What happens when somebody's work isn't received that well? What? How do they kind of um, make sure the narrative is what they want it to be? How do they make sure they support each other? How do they make sure they kind of bounce back? That's something that's interesting. But that aside, I thought the explanation itself looked really cool. I really like the idea that they did, um, what Virgil did, I guess, with the DJ deck. So usually in these places, you know, you're doing a store launch, you have maybe some promotional materials, you might have some special installations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then the most, the, the kind of integral part of the whole thing is to kind of have a DJ booth with a DJ playing, usually the DJ isn't, you know, it's not somebody you're going to see in fabric. It's usually somebody that's very popular within the scene that also happens to play music. And the whole idea behind it is, oh, it's quite cool to see, a, you know, this person playing behind the decks and hearing what they're going to play. But I like the idea of how it was kind of communal. It was kind of reminded me, because they had the DJ be basically on a coffee table, which is, you know, Kind of incredibly low um, with incredibly low um, couches as well to the ground and the whole idea behind it was that everyone kind of congregated behind this DJ booth with CDJs and vinyls and everyone was able to play what they wanted to play right just kind of like back to back sort of like communal uh, sort of playing and you know those shows that you might see with Anthony Bourdain where he would go and eat uh, eat a meal with like a tribe or with a, a particular small community and they all gather around a really big table they, they put the entire carcass of an animal in, in the middle of the of the table surrounded by all these lovely bits of food and you kind of take a plate and you kind of all pick and choose out of it and you're intermingling everyone's moving around you're talking you're making connections so I love that whole communal aspect of it where everyone was kind of involved again I'm sure not everyone got to play I'm not sure not strangers got to come in and just plug their USBs in which probably would have been quite cool but I like the idea of kind of bringing everyone together and I thought I'd just kind of highlight this because again something that people don't really say a lot or give people props for when they're doing these kind of things it's always kind of the store thing or the limited edition run this and that but I think these sort of things are equally as important too so this is a video I saw in Virgil's that um um Instagram account that sort of like shows how fun the night looked and what it kind of transpired but I thought it looked quite cool that girl with uh Perel and Snoop right yeah legendary Netflix so this looks quite cool again I quite like the look of it I think it's nice right everyone around the coffee table playing tunes and then you got another one here too. People like you know, grabbing vinyls and smashing around, which is quite nice to see. It's just another, it's just a cool way to activate. I think, I think in general, like I've, I've mentioned a few times, it's always good to do things, you know, the unconventional approach, you know, twist things a little bit. You don't just copy whatever's been going on in the street and there. Faces here and there. But yeah, overall, it's like a pretty cool activation. Again, on the coffee table, people just around spinning fun, congregating with friends blah de blah 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 so it looks pretty cool so that was i think tying with the louis vuitton collection um that virgil um obviously has made the first collection with louis vuitton so that was a cool way to do it inside of a another store kind of co-branding headline there so you should check that out if you that feel that way inclined